So it's actually cold this morning in Miami. That's why I'm wearing my Iron Mike sweater. But in typical Miami fashion, I'm sure it will be so hot by noon, we'll be sweating our asses off. And if you're watching this video, you have found my new YouTube channel. I feel like I gotta keep saying this, because believe it or not, many people haven't realized that I'm no longer a part of the previous channel. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the new content. So I wanna talk to you a little bit about something that many people have been asking me about, and it's how to make money selling watches. Now this is a topic that I could go on for hours and hours, but the idea is to give you guys five easy steps to follow so you could get up on game on how to make money selling watches. Number one, watch all my videos on YouTube and learn about watches, just kidding. But number one is really the most important one and it's get some capital. I mean, look, this is the type of business that I don't care how much money you have, all the money in the world is still not enough money. I feel like it doesn't matter how much money you pump in, this business will eat it. But you gotta have a starting point. Somewhere you can say, hey, doesn't matter if you're starting off with maybe just a couple small watches or one big watch, but the idea is to get an idea of how much capital you wanna work with so you can take it from there. I've heard many stories where people have started from one watch and flipped their way up to a full collection. I saw a friend of mine do it himself Mostly more for a hobby, not for a business. But if you tweak that model just a little bit, he could have made a business out of it. But he was more of a collector enthusiast. But most important is, you have to set up your capital budget. Because without that, you're really dead in the water. So in reality, you can really just start with one watch. It doesn't have to be the craziest watch in the world. But that way you can perhaps maybe minimize loss. You're going to make some mistakes in this business. So set up a budget and get to work. So pretty much you either borrow some money or get some type of a loan or raise some capital, but without money, um, you pretty much can't do much. Number two is choose your market. The reason I say this is because you kind of want to know who you're going to target, all right? If you're getting into the game and you might not really be around the social circles to perhaps sell a richer mill, you might want to not waste your time trying to go for that big grand slam and just target more your market of what you're available to do. Believe it or not, there's a lot of sales that can be done in some of the lower level watches that go anywhere from Cartier to Breitlings to even some off brands that even like Hamilton. A flip is a flip. It doesn't matter what it is. And sometimes the lower priced watches actually leave you a pretty decent margin. So you need to choose your market. That way you can set up your system to provide the watches correctly for the market that you're going to sell. The reason I say this is because the steps that are coming after this kind of need to be orientated around who is the target audience that you are trying to market these pieces to. So you need to know exactly who and where you're going to sell these watches. Who and where you're going to sell these to, like who you're going to go to, like in other words, you're not going to go out there and start slanging RMs to Sway Lee. You can work your way up there. I also want to add to this that your market can change as this goes developing. At the end of the day, you just gotta choose a starting point to target your market. Tell you what, I feel like this spot, finally we have some type of peace and quiet. No one bothers us. It's so quiet. Anyway, number three, learn the product. This goes with any type of sales business you're trying to do. You can't sell something if you don't know the product. Imagine trying to sell a multi-million dollar mansion and you can't answer any questions, you don't know nothing about the neighborhood or anything about the architecture of the house. So you need to know your product. Whatever type of market you're trying to target, whatever watches those are gonna be, you need to learn them well. You don't want somebody asking you if you have a Rose Gold 5980 and you don't even know what the reference number is. You're quoting them a price of a 5711. You know, you're gonna make some big mistakes if you don't know the product correctly. Not to mention that clients are gonna sense that you don't know what you're talking about. So. Know the product well, and when I'm talking about know the product well, you don't have to necessarily know every single detail about it. You know, it's good to know the power reserve and all the little fun and shiny stuff about it, but in reality, what you need to know more about the product is the prices, the model numbers. You know, you gotta know exactly what you're talking about. That's the only way that you're gonna be successful navigating in these waters. Knowing the product also involves knowing which one's better than the other, you know, the pros and the cons, because a lot of times there's gonna be buyers that kinda don't even know what they want. Those are actually the worst buyers. But if you can guide them the right way, 
you can actually get them to buy a watch that they'll be happy with for a very long time. Number four is one that cannot be left behind and it's make some contacts. You're gonna need all sorts of contacts. Where you're gonna get your watches from. Another thing that I find very important too is where you're gonna service these watches. Every good watch dealer or watch flipper is gonna need a good watch maker to perhaps clean out watches, check the watches. You may not have the best experience yet on seeing if a watch is real or fake. So you're gonna have to rely on a really good watch maker to guide you and make sure the watches that you're buying are correct and legit. Another good thing is also, it's always good to have that one guy that you can buy all sorts of odd and end parts like links, boxes, straps. Most of the time people rely on eBay for these type of things. But if you're lucky enough, you may be able to find somebody that has access to these type of things for you. But having somewhere to find these watches is obviously going to be important. Whether you're going on these Facebook groups or maybe you're just one of these eBay hooligans. Some people shop around to different estate sales or just buy and sell from friends and family. All of this would work, but you need to find a stream of where you're gonna get your merchandise because all that capital is gonna do you no good if you have no merchandise. So yeah, getting the capital is gonna be half the battle. The other battle is gonna be then finding the watches. Last but not least, number five is know your clients. The reason I say this is it's very important. You gotta know who you're selling to. You already have a couple clients that you're trying to target. You gotta know what they like and how they like to buy. There are some clients that I call them inventory buyers. These are the guys that have to see the watches in front of them and just pretty much go, wow, look at that one and pick one out. Then you got these guys that know exactly what they want and they tell you, hey, can you find me this? Or what do you think about that watch? You know, there's two different types of buyers. Actually, there's like 20,000 different types of buyers, but these two different type of buyers, you gotta know how to manipulate them or sell to them. You don't wanna pitch somebody a sky dweller when you know he's obviously in a date just budget. It could come off a bit pushy and that might not work. There's clients that don't like to be sold watches. They wanna themselves select it. So you gotta know your client and know when to be pushy and when to be salesy and when to just sit back and let them come to you. Pretty much you gotta know your clientele. You gotta know how to target them. You gotta know what watches they like and how to get them to buy. You know, the idea I say is to never really push a sale on anybody. The idea is for somebody to feel very comfortable and happy with the watch so that way they come back. You know, the last thing you ever wanna do is sell a watch to somebody and they kinda feel like, man, they kinda pushed that watch on me. That's never been my style at least. I'm not a pushy seller at all. I like to talk about watches, I like to share my experience with them, and through that comes the sales. I mean, pretty much that's why my new store doesn't even look like a store. It looks more like a hangout or a lounge or almost like a watch car man cave, but it's got a bar and everything. I mean, that's the idea. The idea is for it to just be kind of chill. Actually, stay tuned. I'm going to be releasing a video about the whole creation of my new store. So in conclusion, making money selling watches is not easy. I'm not even going to lie to you. You know, pretty much there's a lot of pitfalls that you could just wipe out just like that. And a lot of people ask me, hey, how did you get into the watch business? Well, it's very simple. You just got to start spending money. That's really how you learn. But it can be done. This is not rocket science. I'm not a nuclear physicist. It's none of that stuff. It just takes determination and most important, focus, hard work and dedication. So comment below with any feedbacks or tips you would like to share about making money selling watches. And if you like this video, like and share it. Also, subscribe to my new Watch Eric YouTube channel. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at watch.eric.